Hello everybody, this is a little tutorial on how to use Gantt Project, which is a project management tool used to uh, schedule tasks, lay out schedules, uh, manage resources for those tasks, um, those type of things that any project manager is, is going to need to do um, to create a schedule and you, you know plan projects, basically. So let's jump right into it. Uh, Let's go through the UI first just to get familiar with our surroundings. So you'll notice the taskbar up here. Um, project is where you're going to go for opening a new project, saving, exporting, those type of things. Edit will give you editing options, so undo, redo, refresh, paste, those simple ones. Um, view gives us other views of the Gantt chart. Tasks, everything that has to do with tasks, creating tasks, properties, deletion, same with resources, creating, um, we'll go into that a little later, and then help. If you need any help or uh, if you want to find anything out about GAM project, that's where you're going to want to go. Um, then this bar under he underneath has, has some uh, icons that represent some options we can use. This creates a, opens an existing project. We can save our project, uh, create resources. That button changes depending on which pane you're in. Uh, so this is create new resource or create new task, delete, gives you some information about what you're highlighted on, cut, copy, paste, and then you have your undo and redo. This uh, search bar over here lets you search through your resources or tasks to find one easier than, you know, having to go through your list manually. Then you have the, we have this pane over here which is going to list all of our tasks if you're in the Gantt mode up here, it's going to list all of our tasks and give us some information. We can sort by name, date. Uh, that's useful for quick looking up. And then if you click on the resource option, it'll give you the name of all your resources, their roles, and some more information about them. We can we can make this bigger. We can make this smaller. We can expand it across the whole screen and then take it back. Or we can completely remove it if we want. Let me just click the little arrow to get it back out. So you'll see this big main area in the middle here is where everything will be happening. Uh, this is where all the tasks will be laid out in a, in a Gantt chart fashion across the screen as we add them. Um, we'll be able to, you can manipulate the chart through this main area as well as through the properties of the task itself, which is, it's helpful to do it in here because then you can see it as you're, as you're changing it. If we click on the resource option over here, we're going to see all of our resources as we populate them and uh, what they're working on as the as the schedule advances um, you know when they have time to work on things that that type of thing alright so let's get started with some simple tasks uh, first we're gonna let's make a task and, and uh, change the properties a little bit um, and get this chart a little populated so we can see how it works uh, you can do you can make a task a couple of different ways you can you can right click in this main area and create new task you can come over here and just double, or, and you can right click and create new task, sorry. And you can also click on this icon right here to create new task. So let's go ahead and use this option. You'll see that a bar has come up here for th that represents the task, and it also populated one space in this, in this portion over here. Uh, we can change the name of the task simply by double clicking on it. So let's make this task uh, first task. Now you, it'll show the, the begin date and the end date, um, depending on the default. Is looks like it's one day. Uh, so once we create that task, we can now manipulate it in in the main pane. So if you need to make it longer or shorter, we can we can just click on the end and and move it around. Increase the days or decrease the days. Let's make this a week long. We can also show how much progress has been made in this task. So if we start all the way over here at the left and hold down left click and move across, we can increase the percentage by which that ta say this task is half done, so we can increase it to 50% that way. So let's let's change this task a little bit. We can right click on the task in this pane or we can right click on the task over here or we can click on this right here and get the properties for that task. So here's our name that we already that we already did. Uh, this defines if it's a milestone or not. So if that's something we are working towards rather than some task that's going to take a couple days. 
Uh, we can change the, the dates here as well as m manually in the chart itself. Um, these are constraints that can be added to it, so we, we can only begin it at this date. Uh, let's not set that for that. And then here's our priority. What priority is that task? Is it is it high priority? Should we do it right away, or, or should we make it a little lower? If it's if it can be uh, put on the back burner, we'll keep it at normal for now. Here's our progress that was already we already changed a little bit through the through the main view by starting at the left and moving over. Now this one option w we can select if we don't want to show it in this on this main chart area. If we want to keep it hidden, maybe it's maybe it's low priority. We don't want to see it. Um, we can select that. This defines how it looks in the chart, so there's some rather funky looking options here. Let's keep it normal. And here we can change our color, so let's, maybe you want to make different um, milestone tasks, different colors to differentiate them, which is sometimes helpful. Let's make it red. Okay. And here we have a web link option, so you can say you have um, like a bug tracker or something that's assigned to that task, you can put a link to that here and um, we can open the link through the task, which makes things rather easy. We can add notes to it, maybe what has been done so far, uh, anything pertinent to the task. So then we have some tabs up here, which also pertain to the task, excuse me. So we have, you can set predecessors, so things that need to be done before this task can be done. We don't have any other tasks right now, so we can't do that, but I'll show you in a little bit how we can add those predecessors. We can also add resources to task, who is working on it. Um, we don't have any resources right now, but I'll go into that a little bit later. And then custom columns. So we can add anything else to this task that we want. Say, uh, let's, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to add another column down here. For example, um, let's say if this, needs to be, if this needs to be approved or not at the end. So we'll say needs approval. And we can set what type of variable that is. So needs approval is either yes or no, so that's a Boolean variable, and we're going to set the default to yes. Default value is true. So whenever we create a new task, it's going to need approval unless we go in here and change it. So then that shows up there. All right, so now that we have our task and we've 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 done a couple changes and we've seen how to change it a little bit. Let's click OK. As you can see, the color changed, so that makes things easy. And up here, you can see that it's listed in this top, on this timeline bar as well. First task, the name of the task. Let's make it. Let's make it this long. OK. Now, let's go ahead and add a couple resources so we can assign them to that task and um, dig a little deeper into the options we have. So, once again, we can right click in here to make a new resource, or we can click on this little, looks like a little like ID card type of thing. So let's click on that and create a resource. So, who should our first employee be? Let's name him, I don't know, uh, Bob Smith. It's generic enough. We can add a phone number, and we also add, can add an email, which is useful. And I'll get into that a little bit. So we'll, we'll say bsmith at somecompany.com. And default role. It's rather constrained here since this project is a generic project. But you'll see in a little bit, once we create a new project, we can expand this a little bit so we can get a little more granularity in terms of who this person actually is. So for right now, we'll leave it undefined. You can also set some days off so that tasks can be uh, defined a little better in terms of when these per people are working. So you can set a vacation date or something, and th then that will person won't be able to work on anything while they're while they're off, which is useful. Now we also have this custom columns over here, which is which is very similar to the the approval that we added to our first task. We can we can add more information to the resource if we if we need to so let's say um, if the person let's say we wanted to find if the person is part-time or full-time so we can we can set full-time this will also be a boolean value since it's yes or no it didn't work let's try again there we go boolean um, 
we want we want everybody that we create to be full time unless we specify. So we'll set that to two. Let's add another one that's a string. So let's say uh, what department they're in. So that's going to be text. We'll enable that for everybody we create. And let's say he's in the, uh, I don't know, the development department. So now we have a little more information as to who this person is um, when we add those custom fields. Click OK. Now he shows up in the resource list. So his default role, whether he's full time, and his department shows up as well. So now the useful part about adding an email to, to Bob was that we can uh, we can send him an email through Gantt Project, which is useful. Now I don't have Outlook installed on here, but when you click this, it'll open Outlook and open an email to Bob, depending on what his email was, which is pretty useful. All right, so now that we know how to create a task and that we know how to um, populate our resources, let's go ahead and create a new project and uh, get going and make something that's a, that's a little uh, more interesting than this. So we're going to go up here to Project new. I don't want to save this. Now here we can define what this project is. So we're going to we're going to make this tutorial project. Uh, the organization will be some company. This is a this this link can be to anything to the to the pro to a link to the project page, to a bug tracker, anything useful like that. So and then we can also give a description. So this is a tutorial project and click next once you have all those filled in now before when we were creating Bob we saw that his his roles were rather limited it was undefined or project manager so here if we click on software development we get a little more granularity in terms of what people are doing and it includes developer doc writer tester we can set resources to these new values which is pretty helpful so you can set a holiday calendar so tasks won't be worked on on certain days. Where's the United States? There it is. And the w choose the weekend days. So Saturday and Sunday are the default weekend days. And on weekends, uh, we want everybody's off so that no tasks can be run those days. Click OK. All right, so once we have our tasks created, or our, our, I'm sorry, excuse me, our project created, we can go ahead and start uh, populating some so let's go ahead and create some tasks so let's let's say this is um, let's go with something simple like uh, like a web page so first we need to um, design page then we need to uh, code HTML for page We also need to code JavaScript for the page. And then we want to release the page so that people can access it. So we made those all in this pane over here. We also could have right clicked and created a new task. So let's make this a little longer. So say designing the page, we have front end guys working on that. They're going to take a couple days. So let's make that about that long. Um, we can go in here and change the properties a little bit. So let's make this begin as early as possible. So we want to begin tomorrow. And uh, the priority is pretty high. Well, let's, let's keep everything normal for now. We want to show it in the timeline, keep the shape similar. Let's, let's make design stuff No predecessors. We don't have any resources yet, and uh, so let's get that ready. Okay. Code HTML for the page. Let's have development stuff be red. Get that green. Now we do want to add a predecessor. We can't code until we have the design. So now that now. 
this task can't be started until task number ID, which is this one right here, until that one is complete. So let's say coding takes a week. We'll do the same for You can set your, there's a lot of color options here, but you can really go into some deep options, but we'll, st we'll stick with this. Okay, uh, set it the same color as the other development one. Keep all the same default options, and we also want to have the predecessor be the design. Let's get rid of this. Added one too many. Oh, looks like there's an error. Let's go back into here. Let's say that takes it just as long as coding the HTML. Now releasing the page, let's make that a different color. And this needs to be after all of the coding is done. See that takes a couple days to get it deployed. Now once this is all complete, that means the project's complete. Correct. So, let's make a milestone that we can work towards to uh, encompass all that work. So let's say this is website complete. This is what we're working towards. That's going to be a milestone. Let's make that golden, like a, like a gold medal. That's what we're running towards. And this needs to be done after the after the after the. Uh, oh no! After we release, that's where we want it. So there we are. There we're. That's our milestone that we're working towards. So now we have a, a chart here. We can say we already started and we want to get some progress d displayed in this chart. So we've done our our designing. So we, we can left click on the left and um, drag it all the way across. So that's complete. Then we can say we're 50% done with the JavaScript and 55, let's say 60% done with the HTML. You can also, if you if you scroll with your mouse, you can zoom in if, if things are getting a little tough to work with that far out. So you can zoom in really, this is, this is the farthest you can zoom in and it, oh, sorry, I zoomed out. So that makes things a little easier. And then you can see right here, this is where our, our milestone shows up on the list up there. We can see the critical path needed to complete. It uh, highlights it in these in these diagonal lines, which is helpful. Now let's add some resources to uh, to these tasks. So let's add a couple people. I'm gonna add let's add Bob Smith again. We don't really need a phone number right now, but you can add that in the mail as well. So now we have these extra options that we got when we created the project. So let's make him a uh, let's make him the developer. He doesn't have any days off because he works very hard. Let's add the project manager. We'll make him uh, Bill uh, Brown. He's gonna be our our manager. And one more person, somebody with uh, who does the DevOps, will make that just for um, PC reasons. Let's make it a woman. So let's make it uh, she's gonna be designer. So now that we have our resources. We can go into our projects and assign them. So the designer is going to be Sally. It's 100% of her time. Now the coding is going to be done by. Shoot, now I forget who we made our. Now I forget who we made our coder. Bob.
working on some sort of coordinator here, whoever's in charge. If there's multiple people working on a project, that's who's coordinating it. Lastly, this bill. All right, so now we have people working on our on our tasks. We go in here and we can see who's doing what at each particular time. So you can see across here, Bob's stuff is on the top. And we can display things with different colors, show their days off. If, if they're overloaded, it'll show in red. If they're underloaded, it'll show in green. If they're laid out perfectly, it'll show in blue. So we've laid it out good here. Um, okay, so we have a nice little project here with a couple tasks, a couple resources. Let's go in and save it. So let's save our project. Let's go to save it as save it as a GAMP project file. So now what one of the other great things about GAMP project is that you can export it to a Microsoft project file, which is extremely helpful if you are working with somebody else who maybe likes all of the extra features and and um, budget managing and everything else that comes with Microsoft Project whereas you only need a lightweight solution which is what game project is so we can go in here and we can export as a Microsoft Project file we can also export as an image uh, if we just need the chart we can export as a comma separated we can export as an HTML report uh, and a PDF, which is all very, ex it's all extremely useful. So let's export it as a Microsoft Project file. Okay, so here we've we've opened our project in Microsoft Project, the one that we've exported. We can see that here's our tasks, here's our milestone, here's our resources that we've created. Everything's come over fairly smoothly. Um, some things will be out of place as uh, CAM project saves in, a, in an older file type, so you'll have to make a couple small changes, but overall it, it works out fairly well. Alright, so that's that's our overview of uh, GAMP project. Um, if you have any questions or you have any problems, you can go to their website at gantproject.biz. Uh, here you can download it. Um, you can download on Windows, Linux, OS X. Uh, you can get help. You can. Uh, there's a forum, a blog, a list of bugs, anything that might be helpful in your in your uh, usage of GAMP project. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was useful and uh, have fun making your projects with GAMP project.